Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad that you could be with me. I'm going to try to keep my hands off the table so that I don't shake it a lot, but uh, I am excited about this lesson. We get to talk about friends. Uh, you can see from behind me, I have the word friend on a, a piece of paper, and so uh, if you've not had a chance to collect supplies, I sent a list with moms and dads. If you're not on the email list, just send me a message at pastorcharles at redlandschurch.net, and I'll get you on the list, but uh, you're going to need a piece of paper, you're going to need a pencil, you are going to need some clay if you have it, modeling clay, um, you're going to need your Bible, very important thing as we look into God's Word to see what He has for us, as it's God who gives us friends, and so as we get started with that this morning, we're going to start with a word of prayer, and then we are going to work on our memory verse. For those that of you who have been working on it, we are to verse 10 of Psalm 146. We're to the last verse. And so uh, next week and the week after, we're going to start putting it together. And then I'm going to encourage everybody to send in video clips because we're going to take those video clips. I'm going to put them together and we're going to show everybody what we have been learning this summer, Psalm 146. Let's, uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Lord God, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for each of the children and their families that are watching this video. We pray, Lord, that it would be profitable for all of us, that we would learn about you and how, Lord, you are the one that gives us friends, and we can thank you for that. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Psalm 146, verse 10. I have my flash card, and I have to make them big so that I, well, hopefully so that you can see what it says. The Lord, oh, Psalm 146, 10. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. All right, so... Psalm 146.10, the Lord reigns, to reign means to rule, and so think of a king, so we're putting the crown on, the Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations, you can't see my hands, but forever, I mean, all generations, praise the Lord. All right, what, is it, what, what, what does the psalmist mean when he says, Your God, O Zion, for all generations? Zion is another word for Jerusalem. And Jerusalem comes to represent all of Israel. And, and so what the verse is telling us is the Lord reigns. Your God, O Israel, for all generations, for all people that live, God reigns. God rules. Praise the Lord. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up to Psalm 146. And we are going to see if we can say from 146 all the way to the end. One more review of Psalm 146.10. Psalm 146.10. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. All right, so Psalm 146.6, the maker of heavens and the earth and the seas and everything in it or in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner. He sustain, and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates 
the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Psalm 146, 6 through 10. So if you were able to say that, that's half the chapter. All right, let's back it up and try it one more time. This time I'm not going to hold up the words, but I am going to do the motions with you. So the maker of the heavens, and you think up in the air, the heavens, the earth, and the seas, and everything in them. The Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. He sets the prisoner free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner. He sustains. That means he cares for. He sustains the fatherless and the widow. But the ways of the wicked. or But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations... Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to keep on working on that. We are going to work on it and work on it until, until we get it. All right, so you're going to need a, your, your piece of paper, and you're going to need your Bible. And what I want you to do with your piece of paper is I want you to make a box. Well, write the word friend right in the center of it. And then I want you to make a box around that, fr- that word friend. And then I want you to, to start thinking. Well, actually, but before you start thinking about that, I have a different question for you. What is the nicest thing a friend has done for you? And maybe you need to, to pause the, the video at this point and you can talk with your moms and dads or brothers or sisters. What is the nicest thing a friend has ever done for you? You know, as as I think about that, one of my most favorite memories of what a friend did for me is when I got married, I had friends that traveled a thousand miles to come and surprise me. And so uh, they they showed up my we- showed up at my wedding. I didn't know that they were coming. I look out over the crowd, and there they are. Imagine my surprise! And I felt so cared for at that moment that that my friends would come that far to support me. So, what is the nicest thing a friend has ever done for you? And so, once you an- answer that question, what I want you to do is I want you to think to yourself, what makes a good friend? And I want you to take our, your piece of paper. It doesn't have to be as big as mine. But I want you to take your piece of paper. And I want you to, to write what makes a good friend. And, and so, you know, the first thing I think of what, in what makes a good friend is that they're friendly. And, and so I want you to, to write those words down on there. And then I want you to draw a line from your word to the box. We're going to make a giant like spider web. And so what I'm going to do, because as you can tell from behind me, that my page is blank. And so I am going to actually pause this myself and I am going to work on it. So while I'm working on it, why don't you take a few minutes and work on it as well? I will see you back here in just a moment. Welcome back. I hope that you came up with a list. As you can see behind me, I have come up with a list as well. So why don't we take a moment or two and we'll compare our lists. Maybe you wrote down some of the same things that that I wrote down. Uh, let's see. Starting, oh, I don't know. Let's start up at the top there where it says loyal. Uh, I like a friend that's loyal, that, that isn't going to go out and talk behind my back, but if, if we have problems or whatnot, that they come and talk to me. 
I like friends that play. Do, do you like friends that play, that want to get together and, and do things? And, you know, sometimes when, when ladies get together, they, they sit and they talk. Well, one of the things that guys like to do is we like activities. We like to do things together. And so it may be fishing. It may be hiking. It may be camping. Just there are all sorts of things. But, but I like to play. Uh, love. Uh, I, I, I want my friend to, to think about my interests and what I need and have that be a priority to them. Even as when I'm friendly towards somebody, I want to do what's in their best interest as well. Uh, I like to hang out with my friends. I, I have a, a friend that I, I go to lunch with frequently just so that, that we can hang out together and talk. I like friends that help. You know, I, I moved recently, and I had a friend that, that came and, and helped me move, and I so appreciated that. I like a friend down here that, that supports. Do you know, I don't always agree with my friends, and my friends don't always agree with me, but we support one another. We encourage one another. We, we want to do what's best for one another. I like friends that are funny. I, I like a sense of humor. I like to laugh. And so I like friends that like to laugh and have a sense of humor as well. Uh, I like friends that are interesting. They don't even have to have the same interests in me. Uh, I have a friend that, that likes cars and, and knows everything there is to know about cars. I know nothing about cars. And so we'll get together and he'll talk to me about cars and I'll do some of this. And I'll, I'll ask questions because I, I'm interested in what he's interested in because of our friendship. I did mention friendly, didn't I? That we uh, want friends that are friendly towards us. I mean, nobody wants to be friends with a mean person, do we? Uh, I have play written uh, right above friendly because I forgot to talk about, let's see if I can get my finger there, I forgot to talk about pray. Have you thought about praying for your friend? I know I pray for my friends that, that because of what they need and what they want, that I, I take it to God and, and talk to God about it. And, and then the last thing I mentioned was care. I want my friends to be caring. I want them to be genuinely nice people. Do you like nice people? All right, let me. So I don't know what your list was. Maybe if your list was was a lot different than my list was, you can email me or you can t uh, take a picture of it and, and send it to me, or have your moms and dads take a picture of it and send it to me, so that I'll have an idea of some of the things you were thinking of. Let me let me ask a couple of more questions before we get into our lesson. And what I want you to do is, as I go through the lesson today, as I read some of it and tell some of it, I want you to look through this list. And, and maybe as we tell the story, you'll see where David and his friend Jonathan, whom God gave him, display some of these characteristics. But... Here's, here's what I want to ask you is, what can you do to reach out when you need a friend? There's times where we're all lonely or we feel alone and we just need a friend. There are times where we just want to do something with somebody and we need a friend. And so what can you do to, to reach out when you need a friend? Uh, we can pray. We can ask mom or dad to make a play date. We can... Well, what else can we do? We can maybe call the person. Or we, you know, as, as we get older, we, we go over and we visit with that person. Or we'll text them and, and make an appointment. Uh, somebody that I care about a lot is, is suffering some loss. Something bad has happened in their family. And, and so I reached out and I texted them. I sent them a message to let them know that I was praying for them and that I care about them. Um, here's another question, kind of the same question, but a little bit different. 
what can you do when you see somebody that needs a friend? You know, we're, for a lot of us, school is going to start tomorrow, and we're, maybe we're going to be in a new situation, or maybe we're going to the same school, but we're going to know other kids, or we're going to see other kids that are in a new situation. I know some of you have already been in school for a while. You go to Cap Rock or you homeschool and you've, you've already been doing some school for a while. And, and, and so you can take this and think about this. What can you do when you see somebody that needs a friend? Go hang out with them. Offer to pl pl uh, play with them. You can eat lunch with them. You can ask them questions. You can get to know them a little bit better. And so those are just a few things that you can do when you see somebody that needs a friend. Now, when you see somebody that needs a friend, does that mean that you're going to go out and make them your best friend? No. Well, maybe. You know, for, for many of us that, that are married, we started out with our spouse by being their friend. And so my wife is my best friend. And, and But there was a time when she wasn't my best friend. In fact, if you listen to her, she'll even tell you that she didn't like me at first. Imagine that. All right, so we're going to look in First Samuel. But before we do, and I did something a little different this week. I brought a marker because I wanted you to be able to see. The Bible's divided up into two sections. The big section here is called what? Yes, the Old Testament, which makes the, the little section over here the New Testament. And so as you can tell, the Old Testament takes up most of the Bible. And I have a finger here where we're going to be. And so this, we're going to be in 1 Samuel. And so this doesn't even take up a whole lot of the Old Testament. So to get to 1 Samuel, I know some of you are looking in your, your table of contents, but you're not going to need to do that. To, to get to 1 Samuel, Genesis, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel. So Genesis, Exodus, say it with me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel. So 1 Samuel chapter 18. Now, does anybody remember what happened last week as we talked in 1 Samuel? What did David go up and do? David went to see his brothers. His father sent him and he went up to see his brothers and he heard Goliath, the Philistine, challenging the army of God and making fun of God and mocking God. And so David said that he would go out and kill the Philistine, because he knew God would help him. And he went out and did it with God's help. And we learn that God can use any of us. Well, today we're going to learn that God gives us friends. And so after David killed Goliath, the king told David to come and to stay with him. All right, we're going to pick up in 1 Samuel 18, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4, and I, I want you to see this. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan, King David's or King Saul's son, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. All right, so Jonathan, King Saul's son, made a covenant. They made an agreement to be friends. Because Jonathan loved David as himself. And as a symbol of this agreement, we see Jonathan being generous. I could add that to my list. I love friends that are generous. They're generous with their time. They're generous with their 
resources, with what God has given them. And so Jonathan is generous with David because he loves David. And so they made an agreement to be friends. Now, we don't usually enter into an official agreement with friends, do we? No, instead we hang out with them, we spend time with them, we have like interests, we learn from them, we play with them, we care about them. And, and, and so that's what David and Jonathan are doing. Now I want you to flip over to John uh, to 1 Samuel 19. Now, Saul is getting jealous of David. After David killed the Philistine, and he they, they went back to, to where Saul was staying, the, the, the women came out and they celebrated by singing, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Now, neither of them in that battle had killed a thousand, let alone ten thousand, but the women were singing of this and they were exaggerating it as a way of honoring the person. And so Saul got jealous of David because David was receiving more honor than the king was. All right, so in 1 Samuel 19, it says in verse 1, Saul told his son Jonathan and all the attendants to kill David. Oh, his jealousy's really gotten bad, hasn't it? But Jonathan was very fond of David and warned him. My father Saul is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning. Go into hiding and stay there. I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. I'll speak to him about you and will tell you what I find out. Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, let not the king do wrong to his servant David. He has not wronged you, and what he has done has benefited you greatly. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine. The Lord won a great victory for all Israel, and you saw it and were glad. Why then would you do wrong to an innocent man like David by killing him for no reason? Saul listened to Jonathan and took this oath. As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and told him the whole conversation. He brought him to Saul, and David was with Saul as before. And so Jonathan, he stuck up for his friend. He supported his friend. And he convinced his dad to not kill him. I'm sure David was glad to hear that. But you know, it didn't last very long. It wasn't long before the Bible tells us an evil spirit came upon Saul and that Saul tried to murder David with his spear by throwing it against, or throwing it at David. And instead of hitting David, it stuck in the wall before him. And David got up and he ran out. And he went and he was with his wife and Saul sent troops to his home and he surrounded it. But David, with the help of his wife, he escaped out the window and he, he went away. David was supported. He was loved. He was helped by his friends. So in 1 Samuel 20, it says David fled from Naoth to Ramah and he went to Jonathan and he asked what have I done what is my crime how have I wronged your father that he's trying to take my life and you know Jonathan at first he, he stood up for his father he loved his father as well as loving David and so he stuck up for his father and said my father doesn't want to kill you my father's taken an oath to protect you and, and so David David said do this for me. There is going to be a festival soon. And if I'm not at that festival for two days, then King Saul, he's going to get angry with me and he's going to threaten me. However, Jonathan, if you're right, then I'll be gone from that festival for those two days. And the king, instead of being angry with me, will be okay with it. And so uh, 
David told Jonathan to say that he'd gone back to Bethlehem to be with his family during the festival. And, and so on the first day of the festival, King Saul noticed that, that Jonathan, or not Jonathan, but David was gone. But he thought, oh, David must be unclean. And so that's why he's staying away, that he's not right with God. And once he gets right with God, he'll be back tomorrow. Well, tomorrow arrives, and there's no David. And King Saul becomes violently angry. And Jonathan tries to stick up for, for David by explaining that, that David had gone to Bethlehem to be with his, fa his family during the festival. And King Saul picks up another spear and he actually chucks it, he throws it at his son Jonathan, trying to kill his son Jonathan. Well, Jonathan is convinced now that his dad really does want to kill David. And, and, and so David and, and Jonathan meet, and he explains to him what happens. And he says, I'm, Jonathan says, I'm, I'm going to talk to my, my dad one more time. And here's what we'll do. Uh, I'll come out and I'll practice shooting my, my bow and, and, and arrow. And I'll tell the, the boy that, that, that will come out to retrieve my arrows for me that if everything's okay with you and my dad, David, then I'll tell the boy to, to go off to the left. And, and then you'll know it's okay to come back in. If, however, I, I tell the boy, keep on going, keep on going then you'll know that it's not safe for you to be there, that you need to keep on going. You need to get away from here. And so Jonathan goes and he talks to his dad. And, and what do you think the response was? Yeah, the response was that, that, that King Saul was angry. He was jealous of David. He wants to kill David. And so the, the next morning... Jonathan goes out and he shoots arrows and he doesn't shoot them to the left. Instead, shoots them way out. And he has a little boy that, that is to go and get the arrows. And as he's going out, Jonathan shoots one as far as he possibly can. And he tells the boy, keep on going. Keep on going. Well, after the boy had collected the arrows, Jonathan sends him back to, to camp. And David comes out of where he was hiding. And, and here at the end, um, verse 41 of chapter 20, it says, After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept together, but David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me, between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to town. These dear friends, they're, they're crying because they're going to miss each other. They're going to miss the time that they spend together. And maybe you've had a best friend that has moved away, or maybe you were the best friend that moved away, and you know what that sadness is like. And, and, and Jonathan and David, they don't know if they're going to see each other again because of King Saul and his rage, his anger. But they know they're going to be friends because they care for each other. They love one another. They are loyal to each other. And, and so God gives us friends so that we can learn about God. David learned what it was like to be loyal and to be loving and to be caring from his friendship with Jonathan. He learned what it was to be generous. In fact, David makes a pledge that when he is king, he will not destroy any of Jonathan's descendants. Now, normally when there's a change of kings from one family to the next family the new family wants to destroy wants to kill everybody in the old family but david promises jonathan he won't do that because of their love for each other okay so here's here's what i want you to do uh maybe you have some some clay i have a little bit of clay here 
And what I need you to do is I want you to get together with somebody else. And I want you to work on friendship. And I want you to take that piece of clay and just use, each of you can use one hand only. The other hand has to be like under your leg or something, behind your back, on top of your head, over your eyes. Of course, it's hard to see if it's over your eyes, but it can't touch the clay. And I want the two of you, using one hand each, to make something with that clay. Now, I'm here by myself this morning as I record this, so I don't have anybody to work with. However, that's okay. I know that you can. And as you do that, I want you to talk about what it's like to have a friend. And to maybe even thank God for what it's like to have a friend. Let's, let's close as you work on your projects with a word of prayer, thanking God for our friends. Lord God, we thank you that you are the giver of friends. Lord, we thank you that the greatest friend we can have is the Lord Jesus, one who is always with us, one that, that supplies our needs. Lord, we're reminded of our memory verse that, that, Lord, you sustain. You meet the needs of the fatherless and the widows. Lord, you're a father to them. And, and Lord, you're a father to us as well. And, and Lord, we thank you for that. We, we thank you, Lord, that you love the righteous, but you frustrate the plans of the wicked. So help us to be right before you. And I just pray that as we go back to school, as we continue in school, Lord, that we would see those that you would put in our path to be friends with us. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us. Help us to show it to others, even as David and Jonathan showed it to one another. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. I hope you have a good week. Uh, keep working on Psalm 146, and I will see you next week. Bye.